Hey, what's going on guys, Darius here and welcome to a new tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to be learning to do two types of rooms that you're going to be seeing on the screen right about now. Okay, good. Uh, hopefully you're going to be able to follow me in this tutorial and uh, yeah, hopefully that you're, hopefully you're going to like it and uh, don't forget to leave a like on the video if you like it. Like, 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 like. <laughs> um, uh, I saw, I'm sorry that I haven't uploaded. Uh, in a while now, it's because I'm in the process of moving in with my girlfriend, so uh, it's kind of taking, you know, uh, a bit of a bit of time. So I can't really get back to uh, my regular upload rate of videos, you know. So just bear with me, and uh, in a month I should be back to making uh, videos more often. Uh, I'm gonna release probably two or three more tutorials this month. So uh, yeah, thumbs up for that. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I'm using Photoshop CC and it's the new, the new version of Photoshop uh, Creative Cloud and I'm kind of disappointed in Adobe right now because it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't really have many features. Uh, it's, it's boring. Like when Photoshop CS5 came out, it had like, holy crap, what healing tool, content to wear, what the f you know, it's, it's, it was amazing and um, yeah. For this one, I'm not that excited. The only feature that I'm excited with is that in the filters right now, you have the camera raw filter. So I can see that Adobe definitely uh, tried to reach out for the photography, uh, for, for, the, for, the, <laughs> for the photographers uh, more in uh, the creative cloud. And uh, yeah, I respect that. I mean, but it's kind of leaving out, you know, on the on innovation and stuff like that. There's nothing really new. So just stick with the CS6 or CS5 or CS4 if you have it. Um, okay, so let's start making the room. Now the first thing that you're gonna need are textures. So I'm gonna grab this uh, wood texture which we're going to use as uh, a floor and then I'm going to select all and then press Control C on the keyboard or Command C on the Mac and uh, paste it inside of this, um, inside of the canvas of the new file that you have. Now, uh, this is uh, a 1280 by 720 uh, size, but you can do the room size to whatever you want. So, uh, I pasted the, um, the wood here, and I'm going to right click right now, and I'm going to convert the layer to a smart object, and you're gonna see why in a uh, few seconds. So I'm gonna press Control T right now on the keyboard, and this is going to transform your image. You're gonna get this box that's uh, going to go around your entire image. And I just simply hold shift and resize it so that um, so that the uh, texture is inside, is covering your uh, image sides and just drag it to the bottom uh, to where you want. Uh, you know, you can make the floor however big you want. That's your decision, but uh, yeah. And I'll just drag this side right here. Just drag it up like this and press enter. Uh, whoops, don't press enter yet, sorry. <laughs> press control T again, sorry, and uh, right click and then select perspective. And uh, you're gonna wanna drag these uh, corners here. So it's going to expand the floor on the sides and uh, make, you know, like the floor look more 3D. And uh, this looks great. I'm really satisfied with the result. Now we can pass on to uh, the background. And for the background, I'm going to use uh, these bricks and I'm going to copy and paste them here in the document and I'm going to move uh, this behind the floor. Let me just name the layers floor and uh, let's see, background. And we're going to convert this to a smart object too. So right click, convert to smart object and just press Control T and transform it. Make it smaller, you know, so it fits in the image. There we go. Now we got more bricks inside the picture and press enter. Now we're going just to move the uh, bricks just above the um, the wooden floor so uh, it looks more natural um, and uh, now we need to start making it a bit more uh, dark so uh, we're going to make a new layer above the floor layer and make a new layer above the brick layer and I'm going to right click and select create clipping mask for both of them and it's going to create a clipping mask for the uh, the um, wall and the floor so uh, now you're gonna wanna select uh, one of the layers I'm gonna select the floor 
uh, clipping mask layer and I'm going to right click here with a brush selected and I'm just going to select a uh, about 500 pixel no I'm gonna lower it a reasonably big uh, soft brush on hardness 0% um, and with the color black so you can just brush in um, some shading you know like wh where the corners meet to uh, just give it a bit more uh, realism just like this on the bottom just a second there we go so it looks more natural there we go and you can just lower the opacity if it's too much you know you don't have to exaggerate with the opac with um, with the black now we're gonna make a new layer and create a new clipping mask again right here too and uh, this time we're gonna go ham on it and just like go like this just make like this shape here just cover all this area in black this too this too there we go and we're gonna do the same for the floor there we go and what we want why am I doing this it's because I want the lighting to be here you know so it, there's a light above and there's a reflection coming from the wood below like this there we go I'm just gonna put some on the wall over here so it goes like this more or less and now just lower the opacity and this seems to be about right let me check yep and this one here maybe make it a bit higher there we go and uh, now we need some lighting so we're gonna make a layer above everything and we're going to select white right click and then make the brush bigger and just uh, click with a soft brush above and it's going to make a light source put this light source on overlay at first and lower the opacity and uh, make a new light on a new layer again and this time we need to uh, click here and here you know to make it more uh, light e <laughs> Now you're gonna choose a smaller brush size. Uh, in my case, it's gonna be it's gonna be what's the lucky number 138. And uh, I'm gonna make a new layer above everything and just click it on the floor and just make it like a soft brush line, you know. Now, now go to filter, blur, and then uh, motion blur, and set the uh, angle to zero and the distance to about 500. Uh, I find find I find 500 <laughs> to uh, go pretty well, so I'm going to put this on overlay, and I'm going to lower the opacity, just about right. And as you can see, we have a light source coming from above and hitting the uh, wooden, the uh, the wooden floor, and uh, we got our room effect thing going on, and uh, it looks great. I'm pretty satisfied with it. Um, now let's pass on to the second room that you can make and also before I forget you can also add some vignetting some vignetting to this uh, by selecting a big brush uh, with black and you know just brushing on the sides you know just so that the room looks more closed and it doesn't look like in the open there we go just lower the opacity you can also add some text here, you know, some 3D text if you want, if you want, I don't know, or like uh, some graffiti, I don't know. <laughs> um, whatever you find, whatever you, whatever you want, be creative. Okay, now let's pass on to the uh, second type of room that you can make. Um, and uh, yeah, I made a new layer and it's the same size that I use for this room. So uh, we're gonna start by uh, getting a wood texture or any texture that you want. Uh, and we're going to paste it in this new document and uh, we're going to have to right click and convert to smart object and uh, now we can uh, press Control T and transform the texture and just make it smaller there we go uh, I'm gonna make it like this and I'm just going to resize it like this like in a rect rectangular shape now this has to be in the dead center of the image and to do this just select your background and uh, by holding control and clicking on the layer 
uh, or on the layer icon or pressing control a so press control a it's uh, pretty easy and uh, it's going to select everything or you can go to select and then all now you're going to select your layer with um, the background and you're going to go to uh, layer and then um, align layers to selection and vertical centers and now uh, your image shifted a bit now you're gonna go to layer align layer to selection again and then horizontal centers and your image just is in the dead center right now now you can uh, deselect the um, the background and you can uh, press Control R on the keyboard and this is going to bring up the ruler and you can click on the ruler and add lines so uh, you know where the center is there you go and just go, it, the lines are going to snap to uh, the layer that you have selected which is this one here and there we go and now you can actually move the image with no problem because if you bring it here in the center it's going to snap uh, in place so don't worry about moving it um, now you're going to have to make to uh, make a copy of this uh, of the background layer and make sure it's a smart object it's really important guys um, now you have to right click and then select rasterize layer right click again and convert to smart object uh, now we have to move this to the side just like this and it's going to snap here press ctrl t on the keyboard right click and select flip horizontal okay now we, we need to uh, resize it so it fits in the picture so I'm gonna grab this side that's out and just bring it in and uh, there you have it now we're going to go to uh, edit transform and then perspective and uh, if you grab a corner here it's going to uh, bring it up just like this let me just zoom in so I make sure I have uh, I'm right dead on uh, there we go 30 degrees there we go yeah we're just gonna leave it at this press enter and it's going to put your image there now you're going to make a new layer you're going to copy this and uh, wait no wait I was wrong <laughs> you're going to copy uh, the center layer again let's name this back wall and this is going to be uh, right wall there we go copy the back wall again right click rasterize right click convert to smart object and we're going to name this uh, left wall now I know it's a bit complicated but uh, you'll see why we are converting it to a smart object and moving it um, in a second so I'm gonna do the same thing again right click uh, flip horizontal and transform just transform it inside the picture like this right click and then choose perspective and you can move it here up there we go let me just zoom in to make sure that I have it inside uh, this is gonna go up just a little bit more just like that press enter and we're gonna zoom out there we go now you're going to um, copy the back wall again right click rasterize layer and I'm going to rename this to top wall right click convert to smart object and this time we're gonna push it up just like this just a second control T to transform right click flip vertical this time not horizontal because it's up now we're gonna move it inside a picture right click perspective and you're going to drag it to the sides and wait let me just make sure that it fills in there we go just a bit more there you have it press enter okay now uh, we're gonna make another copy of the back wall and do the same process again and uh, those are gonna name this uh, floor this is gonna be our floor make sure the floor is on top of everything now right click rasterize right click convert to smart object press ctrl t again move it down there we go right click then flip vertical move it in the picture right click perspective and move it to the sides there we go 
Now the room is looking pretty great. Uh, I'm gonna press Control H to hide the lines, and as you can see, it definitely has a 3D effect going on. Uh, now I'm going to label the floor uh, red and the walls with uh, green. There we go. So um, the cool thing about smart objects right now is that you can edit uh, the textures that are inside. So if I double click the floor, for example, it's going to open uh, the smart object panel where you can change the textures. So, uh, for example, instead of grabbing a new texture, for example, well, let me just find this, for example, and I'm going to, for example, for example, I say for example a lot. Okay, <laughs> I'm going to paste it inside and I'm going to, for example, <laughs> right click and create a clipping, a clipping mask and now I have to resize the texture and transform it again and that's really inconvenient we don't want that there we go and it doesn't look 3d anymore so to fix that we are going to double click on the floor layer and just paste a new texture here and i'm going to resize this texture just like this i'm going to zoom in press enter and press control and s and this is going to save your uh, PSB. Uh, it's the smart object thing where, where it is right now. And check that out. The texture is already transformed uh, on the floor right now. Uh, and I could do this with the wall, for example, the right wall. I can just paste in the texture, uh, make it smaller, and then just save the document. Let me see. Just gonna make it bigger a bit. Save, and then if I go back, it already uh, transformed it, and uh, it, it made it like 3D. The it changed the perspective to what it was before. But instead, if we created a clipping mask above and paste it, it's gonna look like this, and that looks horrible. So that's uh, why smart objects are fantastic. And what's cool about it is that you can double click the, the layer again and you can delete this texture and save and again and you still have your wood. And I can do the same for the floor. Or you can change, you can have like 30 textures here and uh, change the textures. I'm gonna save and close. And, uh, whoa. <laughs> and uh, right now I should add, in case you have other textures, um, you can add some shadows to give it a bit more of a 3D effect. Um, like for example, I'm going to make a new layer above the floor, right click, create clipping mask, and then grab a soft brush like we did in the other room and just like paint some black on the ground. So uh, it gives that, um, that corner effect thingy. I'm going to do the same for the right wall, create a clipping mask, and I'm going to put it like that even here and I can do the same with the left wall and check that out that looks fantastic now you can go and change um, and change the textures that you're going to be using um, like uh, I don't know you can have a concrete floor and uh, wooden uh, walls for example i don't know whatever you want whatever you think that uh would be cool for example let me just switch the uh, texture here for some um wait a second i'm gonna switch the wall texture for example for some bricks on the ceiling there we go i'm gonna resize it you know, just be creative with uh, your art. You don't have to follow every single step that I take. Uh, you know, you can also add your own um, touch to the picture. That's not forbidden or anything. Like, check that out. That we have the uh, the brick ceiling right now, and uh, yeah, you can do that for the others too. Okay, so that's the uh, end of the tutorial. I really hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, you're going to make some awesome rooms, uh, you know, put some ob objects inside, make some awesome manipulations. I don't know, whatever you want. Put your text. Uh, 
objects, anything you want. I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, I'm going to be making more tutorials uh, about photo manipulation um, in the uh, upcoming month. Yeah, I mean, this month I'm going to make probably two or three more tutorials that are going to cover up some uh, manipulation aspects. Um, okay, yeah, that's about it. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Um, I will see you guys in a bit.